so uh bad news first off um yesterday they had we had a storm in portland it was some lightning i don't know it wasn't didn't seem that bad um but while i was fooling around with the cnc machine i uh it just stopped stopped working all of a sudden the lights stopped turning on and uh not quite sure what happened i don't know if it was like a loose loose wire or it actually had some sort of surge that um, caused a failure inside the controller box. Um, but essentially the power light isn't coming on on the controller. And I need to take a look this morning and see what's going on with it. So we can get this thing fixed. Um, so today is going to be spent probably debugging this, seeing what's going on. Um, got the multimeter out and Let's see what we can figure out. I also wanted to add that uh, I don't actually have this thing connected to the internet, which is not very smart. Uh, so I think it's going to be a better thing to do. The computer is actually not on a smart connection right in the scene. The computer seems to be okay. breadboard was pretty messed up so by the way I didn't actually I bought this from someone on Craigslist so I didn't actually do any of this wiring so it was probably good of me to like go in and actually trace out what was going on so I ended up rewiring this um, I ended up putting the voltage regula regulator uh, before the LED I don't know why it was necessarily after um, maybe it was right I don't know anyway this seems to be working now I rewired it a bit, so on the voltage regulator you have a uh, the bottom pin, so if you do this here, the schematic, that pretty much tells you what's going on. So I have it facing that same direction in the box, um, and I essentially just jumped my ground over to the other breadboard area, and then put the resistor on the anode of the LED, so this wire right here, this one right there is actually going to the LED in the box right there. Um, and yeah, tighten those up a little bit. Maybe it was lo a loose wire in there, who even knows. Um, but that looks a lot cleaner now. And turn it on. That light right there wasn't actually coming on just yesterday. So and then now we have the loose LED on the front. So let's put this thing back together and get cranking so uh, bad news again so I ended up plugging it in and uh, getting it set back up here on the top of the desk and I can turn it on lights come on everything's fine I go and plug the uh, parallel cord in um, and it stops working so guessing something's wrong with this so now I'm gonna try to debug this and see what happens so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so anyway, on the other side of the cable, there should be the same the same wire or same pins being run into there, and uh, there should be continuity between each one of those pins. So, or from the first pin of this end of the cable to the first pin of this end of the cable. And then I just I'm checking that with my multimeter here. So looks like uh, yeah. First pin, we have continuity.
have concluded that it's something going on with the, the emergency stop. Um, so when I unplug the emergency stop here, and I turn it on, it seems to be powering up, but the light on the board is not powered. So that is powered, but everything else isn't. So um, not quite sure what to say there. Uh, back to debugging. Well, I'm back with the uh, good news. So, essentially, this was causing the problem. Um, whenever it was on the metal plate there, and uh, this was connected to the end mill, everything shut off. So, it was creating some sort of loop, which maybe what it should be doing, I guess. Um, but anyway, it was turning the system off, um, and that was causing the problem. So I'm going to see see if it still works. I think it might be something to do with the metal here um, connecting. I think it should still work. I don't know. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to work. And I'm going to just open up Linux CNC and see if we yeah if it still works. So as soon as I put this ground plate on the metal um, and then connect this to the NL, the controller shuts off. So that's not good. Um gonna go ahead and maybe put like a piece of tape on the bottom of this to make it not so conductive. Um and see if that works. So after a bit more playing around I realized that I had the Sherline mill plugged in uh to the wall and apparently that was causing the problem. Um, even though the spindle wasn't on or anything, um, it was. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to explain that. Maybe someone else can help me understand. I definitely am not an electrician, um, but I have the. Set up a second ago, like I just took the. I essentially tried the electrical tape around the bottom of the, the base, and that didn't really change much. Um, but as soon as I took out, unplugged the red wires here are going into this, this plug area. Um, the yellow one there is my controller box. As soon as I unplugged the Shirley mill, everything was fine again. So, I don't know. Maybe someone knows how to explain that. I don't. Alright, so it seems like things are working as expected. Um, I created this yesterday. So it's essentially just a CAD file or a G code of some polygons and there's a tool change in between. And I really just need to get better at understanding how this tool change manual tool change works and how I'm gonna be able to do it um, between different cuts. So that's the plan, excuse me. Um, that's the plan today is to try to figure out how to do get a manual tool change to work so I can like swap out this um, 8 inch end mill for my new um, 1.5 mm one here in the same operation. So, let's see how this goes. So it's essentially ending on the G53 code here. So Z0, so since 0 is like the it's not even going back to zero, which is weird. Though. So that's not even the home zero. So I'm gonna have to think about this. So uh, today's been pretty frustrating. Um, basically, I've spent the day uh, writing my own post processor for Fusion Fusion 360. Um, because I, what I ended up well, what ended up happening was on the uh, simple polygon example from earlier. Uh, it wasn't retracting enough to do a manual tool change. Um, and then that just sort of opened up this can of worms. Um, and some people were saying, like, the only way to do it is by actually separating your, your project into two, or exporting two separate pieces of G code, which doesn't seem like a good solution. I mean, it should just retract to an area where I can actually get the tool out. Um, so, it's actually allowed me to understand a lot more about like how Autodesk and push processors are working. 
So essentially I have a custom one that I hope to make available for the end of the week. Um, and I've also realized there's a couple of like PAL files for Linux CNC that make this uh, this option available to you as well. So I'm hoping to like have a little package that I can include to all the Patreon supporters. Um, and yeah, like I said, hopefully that'll be available by the end of the week. Um, and I'll definitely let you know. Um, and if you're not familiar, like the I just started Patreon. Um, I don't know too much about it, so it's you just go and and add for as like as little as a dollar. Um, you can support the channel. Um, definitely helpful. Uh, allows me to keep on creating these things. Um, but I'll definitely add the link in the description. Check it out. I already have a couple files on there um, for the milling vice in the first episode. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and hope to be back soon with some successful cutting and uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. It seems like it's been forever at this point.